Carol here. A warm welcome to my craft room for the July kit intro cards. I actually did two. So it's an hour and 55 minutes long, but I did two cards for you and a whole lot of techniques. Now here I'm showing you, if I drop my hands here, I'm trying to think, all right, these are foam on foam. I haven't used foam stamps in a long time, but I thought they would lend themselves to the Sunny Studio stamps and dies that we have in our July kit over on Hedgehog Hollow. The foam stamps, they just seem to uh, really want to grab that ink and you need a good saturated ink. I tried the oxide inks, but they didn't lend themselves to the, to the foam style. And because Sunny Studio stamps, we have the rainbow stamp. I used a rainbow die out of my stash, a lot of stash stuff to make these cards. But the July kit is as cute as can be. You have the little swimming pool kids and the little girl with the bucket and really cute July kit. I think you're going to love it. So I thought I would just take some things from my stash and the Catherine Pooler rinks I haven't used. I bought the entire set some time ago and I thought, you know what, they're nice and juicy. So that was a good thing and they really did a good job stamping them out. They were very crisp and uh, the image came out nicely. So I think I had to do three of these chairs to get the color that I wanted and I used that lower one in the middle because it was nice and bright. And my favorite inks, I mean the oxide inks I love, but they didn't seem to uh, lend themselves, like I said, to the foam. But uh, I think the LDRS Creative Hybrid inks would have done a great job, but these were right next to me. <laughs> so, And I wanted to try them because I had bought them the whole set, and I thought, you know what, I want to give these a go. You know, every set that you buy from different uh, companies they have different colors, you know? And so experimenting with different colors is great, I think. Because the Sunny Studio set, I thought was grounded around the um, rainbow die, beautiful die, and it has the uh, border dies. Yeah, and uh, there I was, <laughs> I was talking to a friend on FaceTime and I was showing her the colors, isn't that funny? So if you see me just, you know, I'm just not holding, excuse me, you're gonna walk, oh, you just missed it, yes. Ah, oh, he's always in there. And look at the colors. I think they're really cute. So I decided to take, um, <laughs> it just makes me laugh when I see this because I'm showing, I can't help it. You can't help it. You can't get away with anything when you're filming, right? So um, anyway, I thought, I found this box. Let me go back. I found this box and on it, it said summertime fun. That's what I put on it. I think I got these at a thrift store. Actually, I know I did. I got them in a thrift store and I put them in a box with a lid and I put summertime fun on the outside. So it was a pleasant surprise because the Sunny Studio little girls um, that are in the tube, one is in the tube, one has a little bucket and then you have the splashes on the stamps. You have beautiful sentiments. You have that rainbow dye. And then you have these beautiful border dies. And here's the inks that I was using. I swatch out my inks, and these are the Catherine Pooler swatches. And I wish I had have taken this out before I did my stamping. I did it halfway through. I was looking for a few new colors to stamp with, and I thought, hmm, I'll just go grab these swatches. And uh, yeah, it's good to have swatches around. Sometimes that's the LDRS Creative Lips that I have on there. That is the, the stamps I have there, the inks, excuse me. Now, I'm going to use the Chibitronic lights on one of the cards. I absolutely love it. It would make a wonderful birthday card. That's what I had in mind. Look at those little girls up there, those images. Aren't they cute? And so I was thinking birthday, but I didn't put a sentiment in there. I thought, you know what, I'll just leave it open. And I really was thinking of a little girl card, bright and uh, 
The Chibitronic lights I thought would be wonderful. So that's why it took me, well, I ended up having a two-day migraine Saturday and yesterday. It was not pleasant. The heat wave that's going through Ontario is astronomical. The pressure, it just got to me and I was down for a couple of days. And then it took me, I think I edited this video from 31 hours of work and got it down to a couple hours, but I did two cards for you. So here you see I have the beach balls, I have the flip-flops, the umbrella, the bucket, the chair, and we're going to go from there. I am finally squeezing out the last of my Nouveau, um, I think I've just about finished this with the crystal drops. Uh, I might have a little bit left on the bottom, but anyway, I wanted to take out the white elements. So you can see in the umbrella, I'm using my knife to cut on the glass mat, which is wonderful, but be very careful. I have actually taken a tape runner and I ran it down the squares there. If you see me cutting, I set my um, paper, because it's 140 pound, on the tape and I'm, um, so it doesn't move on me. I don't want it to slip and end up with an injury. So that's what I do. I put it on the tape. Now we're going to move forward and I am going to take some vellum. Now um, I'm going to color the vellum behind the chair in a, you know, in green, but I need to cut this out so the Chibitronic lights shine through. So that's what I'm doing. I've already cut it. I'm just kind of getting it out of the actual cardstock. And can I say I love Chibitronics? Yes, it does take some work. It does take some thinking time to get the lights to be, you know, all working. But I have to give it to Chibitronics. They are a wonderful company and the lights just add that extra something something to your cards. So I was very pleased at uh, having this Ju June kit, or July kit, excuse me. Oh yes, and plus we have that whole stack of six by six thick card stock going in the theme of rainbows. It's beautiful, wait till you see that. So here I'm taking more, yeah, see what I mean? That's why you have to put some tape runner down on the glass mat so it doesn't slide. I'm trying to be super careful and I didn't even cut myself, which is awesome. I always keep band-aids to the side <laughs> in a little bowl just in case I need to grab a band-aid. And uh, so here I'm taking, you can see out of the flip-flops, I took the white part out because the lights are going to be behind the flip-flops, the umbrella, the, the beach ball, and uh, I end up not using the chair, but I used the chair on another card, which you'll see. But uh, yeah, I didn't use it with the Chibitronic lights, which would have looked nice. I just did not have the space on this particular card. And you'll see why when I get going. So here's all of my Chibitronic uh, supplies that I'm going to use. And we are going to create. Now, do you see that paper right there? I got that at Hobby Lobby. It's called Vertigo Paper. And it looks like water, waves. I mean, you can use it for anything. But I wanted to use it behind this circle that I cut out of my circle dies. And I cut this out of the vertical paper. It's really thick. It's like a thick uh, plastic paper. And it's not even a paper, it's plastic. And it has those kind of vertigo. If you keep staring at it, you really do feel like you have vertigo. <laughs> it makes you a bit dizzy. But anyway, I'm taking the gut part out of the little bucket and the Chibitronic light is going to shine through there. Now I'm taking out the flip-flop portions of it and I'm going to cut the vertical paper to be behind it because you want the Chibitronic lights, you're going to see a hole down through your cardstock. So you either need to have vellum or this vertical paper works wonderfully. It just makes the lights shine super special. A super special shine. <laughs> Say that 10 times, right? So I'm going around it with my detail scissors here and we're going to glue this down behind there. When I ran out of the vertical paper, I used some vellum. Vellum shines nicely through uh, anything if you're going to use the Chipotronics. 
Now I'm taking my Copics, any colors will do. I'm just wanting this to look like water. This is going to be a little child's splash pool and wait to see all the fun elements that you can make um, for a pool. And one of them I used the hair gel with the, um, let me see, it was uh, Stampin' Up ink refill in the blue and uh, because I couldn't find my blue alcohol ink. Uh, believe it or not, I, I don't know. You know, when you're doing two cards at the same time and you're trying to look for things and draw your ideas, you, you know, you just seem to grab whatever's closest and the Stampin' Up Blue Indigo uh, ink refill is what I use there. You'll see me cutting around here. This is the 40 pound Stampin' Up uh, vellum that I'm using here, really thick. But like I say with the Chibitronic lights, you don't want to see through to see the light, right? You just want that light to be reflective. So it works super special. So anywho, let the clouds depart and let the rainbows come in. So I'm using my Nouveau Sparkle Pen. I love this. And the color is Strawberry Bonbon bon 185. Then I'll use a Copic marker just to bring out the shovel part. And then I'll put some two little brown colors in there to look like sand. Now I'm going to, I mean, I was really working that Nouveau Crystal Drops. I couldn't believe I got as much out as I did. And yeah, hello. Yeah, right out of the basket. What's she doing? What's she doing here? Oh, there he is. Uh, yeah, it's okay. She'll just carry right on and I did. There it is. Isn't it glittery? So here's the outside of our pool. Now, I grabbed the May Kit, and it's the Waffle Flower Sweet Ice Cream set, and it had these gorgeous little cherries. And you know how you get a pool, and you blow up these little kid pools? Yeah, it's the May Kit. And they have all of these little images on there for summertime. I just love it. I actually went in the pool. Hunter was here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. He was very sick. He had a bad ear infection. So Friday I had to take him to emergency. I mean, what a week. And then I got a migraine Saturday, Sunday. So it really wasn't a, yeah, a productive week. But I worked on these, oh, funny story uh, behind this. But I'll share it later on. <laughs> so I, I put the LDRS Creative Black ink because it's a nice hybrid ink. It works wonderfully with Copics. And I'm just coloring them in with a uh, light mid-tone and dark red. And uh, you can see it there. And then I do a little bit of green. Then I grab my white pen and I make some little pen marks there. The white shadows with my uh, Signal Broad white pen later on. And it's so good to be back putting this video up. I tell you what. Just, you know, one of those weeks, I started doing a project uh, for Hedgehog Hollow for the design team and ended up doing a project with the August kit instead of the July kit because I got them together. Isn't that crazy? But yeah, it's going to be a nice project. I set it aside and now I'm going to use my ultra, ultra thick embossing powder. And I have a big bowl of it there. And what I'm going to do is, before I thought of using the hair gel, like the clear gel with the uh, ink refill, I thought of maybe using the uh, ultra thick embossing powder here. And when it's hot, wait till you see what I do here. While it's hot, just keep adding it. But look what I do. I end up putting it on and then I put the heat tool on it. Watch me. It's nice and hot. So I grab the spoon and I put it on and then I blow on it and I had extra thick embossing powder every look everywhere. <laughs> I was cleaning this up for an hour. You can see it went over on my um, mouse pad and it was everywhere. Yeah. Oh my. I get tired just looking at it because I remember I had to stop everything, take everything off the island and wash it down and then come back because that was just crazy. It looked beautiful though. 
So here's my hair gel. You can see it way down there. I'm sorry I didn't have it in the camera. It's clear hair gel. So I found a plastic little baggie that would zip lock. I poured this gel in there. I don't know what I am doing right there, but I did actually, there it is, okay. I'm putting a good portion, but you don't want to make it too thick because I have to push it out to the outer edges and nothing in the middle but that vertigo paper. So you want to make sure that it's kind of halfy, halfy, half gel, half empty type of thing, nice and flat, so I can move it out to put that center portion on top of that round cutout die that I'm using as a pool. So I get that in there and I work that out. Look at that beautiful blue. And you want to make sure you don't put too much of the ink in there because I want to see those cherries. That's what really makes this pool. When you're looking at it, you've got that super ultra thick embossing powder shining wonderfully. You have this blue water look, you know that plastic look of the little kid's pool. This is why you can't put too much of the gel or hand sanitizer, whatever it is you use in here, because you have to push the center flat and move out the liquid to the outer edges so it looks like that plastic pool. And uh, it really did. Once you get this tape down on the back and you get the vertigo paper pressed down on the inside, like in the center here, it really did give itself to the look of a blow up pool, like a kid's pool. And I think the extra embossing powder, like the extra thick embossing powder, the UD, was really good for that. Now here's the wobbles I'll be using. I thought I would show you the difference between the little mini wobblers from um, Art Impressions and the larger ones. Uh, it's a big difference. So the tiny little wobbles were so cute putting behind all these little images. So what I did, I took my 140 pound card stock and people ask me where I get this. I get it at a stationery store, but there's a paper called Cougar Paper, which I think is 110 pound. And uh, it is pretty close to this. I found uh, that paper over at Sharon's store and I thought, boy, this is pretty close to my 140 pound paper. So I just wanted to tell you the name of it. Uh, it's called Cougar and I, it's either 110 or 120 pound. So you can check that out if you're interested. And I'll try and look it up and see if I can find it and leave it on my blog. So I'm quickly coloring in with my Copics the cute little images. I'll do the faces and then I'm going to add some of the Nouveau Crystal Glaze on some of the portions. I'm going to use my white gel, my white pen, the Signo white pen to add some little designs on the hat and on the little swimsuits. And I also did some little designs on the tubes, the swimming tubes, which are so cute. And, and I saw on one of our design team members uh, put a card out where she masked out the hair and uh, the frill on the one bathing suit and it looked like a little boy. And that's a really cute idea, you know, if you want to have some little boys and little girls. But I wanted two for one card and two for another card that I'm doing. The cards are going to be similar in the way of the design. Uh, they're both going to have pools, but they're both going to be made differently. I thought I would give you two options of um, using the pool. I love the rainbow. You know I love the rainbow. It's just such a great reminder of God's promise to not send a flood. And I am amazed when I look in the sky and see the beauty of it. I was just about to cough. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, I've gotten a cold. Can you believe it? In the midst of all this, I hear we're supposed to have uh, another heat wave also uh, this this week. So uh, we're getting ready for that. It has been hot, I tell you. So it's nice to be in the air conditioning and uh, creating when this heat wave comes through. So I'm really grateful to have this opportunity. Here I'm just adding my um, light colors, my mid-tone and my dark tone. And yeah, 
it's so cute. I just love it. And I love the patterned papers that you get in this kit, the rainbow colors, because not only does it have like stripes and it has hearts, it has plaids, it, oh, they're beautiful and they're thick, which I really like. I think you're going to love July's kit. I mean, they just get better to me. And then you can go out like uh, I did with the other kits and uh, use things in the other kits to fit this kit. They all uh, intermingle with one another. So you can use other kits and build on them with the current kit of the month. So that's wonderful. So here we go. I'm, here's the gel pen. I'm going to put some stripes. I'm going to fussy cut these and I'm going to fussy cut them right close up to the lines. But you know what? Another thing I do when, even though I know I'm going to fussy cut and I try to keep in the lines when I'm coloring, that will really, it's a good practice um, to be able to color small images. So uh, that's what I do. I try to stay in the lines. If I go out, well, it's fine. I know I'm going to uh, cut them out anyway, but it is a good practice to uh, color them like they're going to, you know, be cut out with a dye. So, yeah, that's what I did with that. And then we're going to move forward. I think they're so cute. I like the little glasses, the swimming glasses on the two little swimmers here. So I pretty well do them um, identical because they'll take on their own character when I put them on different cards. This is the fun part when you're coloring. Um, before you cut it out or whatever, uh, I like to set it aside, like kind of up, to the right hand side of me. This is like a tradition when I'm coloring. And then as I pull out the colors that I'm going to use in the card, I can go back and, you know, as we know when you use Copics, they do fade into the cardstock. So it's nice to brighten it up. And I keep looking over and seeing if there's anything else I can do. Here it was brighten up the cheeks. I end up going back and, uh, making them nice and bright and I guess I slowed this down. <laughs> yeah, try um, try putting 30 something hours. I can't remember exactly. I know maybe 31 hours and 40 minutes. Let's go with that of uh, work time into these cards. And believe it or not, um, this was going to be one card. Like I was going to do all of these different techniques and combine them, but it didn't work. They were both they were both such strong featured cards. I couldn't put them together. They didn't um, mold themselves together because they both had their own character, and I, that's why I separated and decide to use different um, ways to create them separately instead of. And you'll see what I mean. I thought they would lend themselves, and I keep saying lend themselves. I don't know. That must be my saying of the day. <laughs> Actually, I've been uh, yesterday. I did the voiceover for, uh, you know, it took me all day to edit, and then I started the voiceover. So this morning, my voice went out on me, so I had to stop, and then I'm starting again this morning. So that's why my voice is changed up or a little raspy. It's because I have this throat thing now going on. <laughs> Does it end? I tell you what. So look at this. Isn't that cute, these little inner tubes? And you can color any colors because the cardstock is rainbow colors. So you have, you know, all the vivid, bright colors of the rainbow in it. So um, nothing's going to look out of place when you're coloring up your images due to the paper. So I find that pretty awesome. And I'm just looking at it here, and they are as cute as can be with the two little ponies coming out of the cap. It reminds me back in the day when you used to uh, um, put those shower caps on, you know, those tight swimming, like they do when you professionally swim. You put those on and, you know, your head would blow out the front because <laughs> you wanted to protect your hair because, you know, back in the day, if you did any swimming, it was in chlorine water. And, uh, yeah. I think I had um, one of those, and then they clipped underneath and snapped to the side. Yes, I don't think I could handle one of those today. Uh, but anyway, yeah, <laughs> it made me think of it. And then it must have had two little holes in it to put the little ponies out. How cute is that? Really cute. Now I put the wobbles on the back. I 
done all the fussy cutting. I made sure I took my memento black marker, went around the edges so none of the white edges were showing. And uh, I did that later on. And then we're going to move on to the creating of the card. So I didn't know what I was going to, you can see how changed up it became. I knew I was going to use the Chipotronics. So I cut all the images with that in my mind, that whatever setup I did, I knew I had to have one particular artifact to press down to light up the Chibitronics, so I chose the pale. And then I also did these waves, but I didn't use them. But it's cool because you just set that aside for another project, right? And even if you get a kit, you, this is, it helps you when you get a kit and you have like say Sunny Studio, you have the dies, you have the uh, nice edges, you know, to make really nice uh, borders, the border dies, the rainbow die, and you have the two images and your sentiments, you can pull from your stash and still use your kit because the kit is so affordable. And uh, I just wanted to throw that in there. So here I had this uh, little inker rainbow die. So I used the papers for that. And what I needed to do here for my chipatronics, I needed to put down where I wanted the lights to show through. But I did change it up in the, in the actual creating of the finished look. And you'll see as I'm going along how I do that. Now you're going to need a battery, the flat batteries. And the funny thing is, I, I did um, a tonic canvas some time ago. I'll try to leave that link. And in there, I had I needed those batteries and I didn't think to get any and then I had in the clearance section at Michaels I found these Ashland submersible submersible LED lights there was 12 of them in this box and I they were $32.99 I got them for $8.29 and inside each one of these 12 lights are two of the flat batteries you see there two of them so I end up with 24 flat batteries <laughs> And I didn't know where I was going to use these submersible lights. I just set it in my stash because they were on sale. And look at that. I'm able to do all of these Chibitronic projects. So let's carry on. You're going I slowed it down here. You're going to need to cut a, you're going to need to cut one little square, like a flip up square to cover the battery. That's how you start out. You want to draw and mark a positive and a negative. And for now, you just have to worry about where this is going to be, where the actual press down object is going to lay on top of the card that you have folded in half and the battery is in between. You can see the LED lights off to my right. You want to make it as small as you can. Uh, obviously, you don't want it to come out the sides of the pail there. So uh, on here, on the flip mark, I'm going to kind of hone in and show you how easy it is because it was very intimidating at first when I first used these Chibitronics. I just couldn't get the concept, but now I've got it through practicing with them, and I'm going to help you with this. You need one side to be a positive, one side to be a negative. Your line is going to run uh, consecutive alongside one another. You're going to have approximately a quarter of an inch, okay, that uh, apart. So remember that. Then where you have your positive and negative, that's where you're going, you put your image on top, we traced it, and then I put my pencil through the holes where I want the light to shine through, then I put the X, which is the positive for me. And on the actual, here's the, LED, the, here's the LED lights, here's the Chibitronics. I have them in, there. these are some of the leftover ones from my last project. And then I have another set. So uh, you get the red, yellow, blue, that's the ones I have. So I set them there and I draw them out right there. This will show me how far apart I need the lines to be on the actual coil on your uh, copper there, your copper um, line roll. 
the thing under my hand there. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going around and setting that little chibatronic. And I'm going around because you want the bottom, it's in the shape of a triangle. So you need the bottom of the triangle, which I think is the negative, and the top is the positive. So if you just follow that along, you will have the perfect, um, where the white space is, you'll have the perfect uh, separation for seating these little chibatronic lights because you've went around and you've actually made them. So here we go. You, uh, you're going to cut your copper wire here I'm just following it, okay? I, I've already made the marks. I know where I have to have my positive and negative, and I know the space. So you have to make a line going from one end all the way around to that folded piece of paper. It doesn't have to meet where you start. You don't have to have a meeting place, you know, where it's attached to anything. Just start at the bottom there. I'm looking, always having my... Um, objects close by so I can tell where they, they need to be and I'll follow the lines going around this is my negative now and they have to come up and they have to touch all the negatives so it needs to touch there I cannot pass through the positive right so I have to make the positive you can see there I'll change that up to the other side because up there um, I'll probably change up my positioning. So go over your fold and under. The negative, if you make that your negative, go up over the folded piece of paper and the fold will face you. That's how I do it. The fold faces you. And then go up over the fold and inside and then stop it. Okay, that's your negative. Then when you do your positive, it's at the bottom of that folded sheet of paper. Now I can go around and I can trace out knowing I need that quarter inch space going so that my bottom triangle can touch the, the lead wire there and it can touch the positive wire, the copper wire. So our tape, it's copper tape, I guess. And, uh, but I don't end up using the chair there, okay? I ended up not using the chair for some reason. I'll, I'll probably figure it out as I'm going here. So I'm going to change up. This is the beauty. You can change up the direction. You know, if you decide, okay, I don't want this there. I don't want a light there. You can change it up. But um, you can see I drew the ball. I have the umbrella I'm going to use, uh, the beach ball, the pail, and the shoes. The little flip-flops are going to be under the pail. Okay. So here you go, I'm going around and you just keep an eraser next to you and all it is is following the X's you made where your objects are going to be, okay? So I ended up putting the, the positive underneath the negative instead of on top. So once we get putting the tape on, you are going to see it and it will click. It didn't click right away for me. You know, I struggled with it. I actually did this, believe you me, three times. I ended up having to use the wire three times because um, it was breaking and uh, it wasn't meeting. But uh, that's fine. I had the pattern down, so I just had to start again. And, you know, so be it. You lose a little bit of your copper wire uh, tape, excuse me, but um, don't be afraid to start again. So here I have the positive on the bottom. I know I have to come around and go right over top, right there with my positive. Because the positive and negative on the inside and outside, that's Hunter. <laughs> he sh he's showing me he has the, he found some ribbon. Oh, that's funny. And then you have your, I'm just making sure I have my negative on there, in case I have to move it over a little bit, okay? So that's all that was happening there. I took my eraser so I wasn't confused when I put the tape on. And as long as it meets up and goes over top of that folded sheet of paper and underneath it. And, you know, it's it works out well if you want to start. I think the second time I started with the underneath, I opened up that 
uh, yeah, we'll keep going over it. I open up that little flap, then I start the wire, the tape. I keep saying wire, but it's the tape. And uh, yeah, you'll you'll really understand it better because I'm doing so many so much erasing here. You'll understand it perfectly once I start applying the tape. And you take the tape and you cut it in half. You don't need that full width. You only need half. So cut enough wire uh, tape. See, look at that. It's a mindset, isn't it? Uh, cut enough tape. Uh, I leave it on the roll and set the roll aside because I don't want to be short. And that works out as well. But you do need to go over the folded piece and under it, the flip lid. You need to go under that so that that piece that's underneath will connect with the positive that's on the bottom. And your lights will light up. Now underneath here, this is where you test it. You put it down and go along. You only need that little quarter of an inch. So then I can start erasing. I know I need my positive um, and my negative to always be in line with the line, actually, if that makes any sense. So sometimes you'll make a mistake and you'll get up in another corner and you'll flip it and they're not going to light up because they won't connect. So you know you just have to flip it around. You have it upside down. So let's continue here. Now we're going to get out your tape and you're going to cut it down the center so you have two pieces. And you're going to put double-sided tape on the bottom of your flap, that little, you know, folded piece of paper to put your battery in. And you're going to secure the positive down to the bottom. And then the flip is going to be up because you're going to see you need to put the tape underneath so it will connect to the positive. And, the, and putting the positive and negative down is important because you see the reasoning behind it. The negative excuse me, the negative wire has to connect to the positive to keep it going. And you need enough separation of both of these wires to uh, only have a wire touching the positive and negative of the light triangle. So um, as, you're, as we're going along here and I get finished cutting this in half, and you could do the whole roll and then reapply the roll and put it away. That way you'd have it all done. I thought of that later, but I was trying to get this project completed <laughs> without having like 59 hours of editing to do. So I just cut it as, you know, uh, where I thought I'd have to use it. And I set it, I'm just following the trail there. And quite easy, quite easy. Once you've done this Chibatronic thing once and you've made about three or four mistakes on it, and it clicks in your mind. I guess some people could just, you know, if you're just doing it where you're leading it across, you've got three holes straight in a row, and uh, you want the light to shine those through those little holes, that's easier. But when you're having to direct it around and around because you have images all over, it takes a little bit of thinking on my part. <laughs> yeah, so here I go. I know I have to go inside, outside. Be very careful on the fold. Because this fold, and you know what I learned? You can use scotch tape. Put a little piece of scotch tape down on top of that fold where it connects there. Because then, with the usage of pressing it and flipping it up and down, you're not going to lose the lead wire there. And it will fold. You don't have to have these perfect. Here's another thing I learned. When you're folding, they don't have to be nice, smooth, round corners. All you have to concentrate on here is making sure it doesn't rip. So if you have to fold it and turn it so it's on top of one another, go ahead and do that. That is my trial and error. I learned that. And now they make material. Um, I, I should have showed it in the... Uh, video. I didn't even think of it, but they do. If it does rip, now they have these little pieces you can put on top to save the tape. Um, and I'll put that in the blog uh, on my blog where I'll link it, where you can see what they what it looks like. And it's good to have it down. I happen to. This is the second run. So um, yeah, the first time I did this, I kept cutting the wire. I guess I was too um, rough with the tape. See, I said wire again. Isn't that something? 
and uh, yeah so here you can see it's just left out there my flip-flops are going to be down below the bucket so uh, there's the tape I didn't know it would work well with uh, putting tape over top and of course it would you just have to make sure that your tape isn't broke anywhere you, ca you can't disconnect it anywhere so don't worry about folding it when you turn around your corners all you have to do is have a picture, a traceable picture of where your images are going to be, where you cut out the space in your image for the light to shine through. Put your positive mark there so you always know where the light needs to be seated. And now when I go around here, you don't even necessarily have to follow your positive lines that you trace because you know it has to be this quarter inch distance apart and if you need reminder grab the little light and place it on there because on the back of the Chibatronic light you have the copper so you have copper on the positive and you have copper down on the triangle um, little corner negative and those have to be placed on your uh, tape here to make it work and I just hang on to that corner with my thumb so it doesn't break and I come alongside here always thinking to myself okay can I go over top and start no I can stop it right there I, I've already got it all the way around I didn't need any more I make sure I take my bone folder and make it secure so I don't have any bumps I tape everything down and uh, that just gives me security and here now I know this is where I want this light so I'll put it down and now you need to connect it here's another thing I'm going to share with you make don't be afraid to really press hard to get that to connect and if it it's lost its tape on the back because it has this sticky just take a little piece of your double-sided tape tear it off and uh, take the the sticky part off and with your finger put it on the back of your uh, light and it will stay on uh, because you don't they're expense they're not cheap I'm not going to say they're too expensive but I just keep testing it out with my thumb there to make sure always that I have a good lead and you can tell I have scotch tape on here um, so that they don't fall off and I don't uh, lose the connection and there you have it that's all set and we're going to put you can either put like I said the uh, I'm putting the vertigo paper behind there because it has that kind of uh, pattern in it and it's thick like acrylic it's uh, plastic you know and here I want to make sure this is where um, I, ha I wanted the light and you can I didn't buy white lights for these I, I bought the colored ones so uh, and I wasn't worried whether I had two yellow or want two red and uh, yeah I had it upside down this is yeah I thought I'd share this and be very careful right there as I saw that when you lift up the scotch tape you don't lift up your wire so um, yeah there's a lot of be carefuls on this but once you have it down um, it's wonderful then go back take your thumb you see how it's not working I'm trying to see now do I have the positive and negative right and if you don't, what I did here is I pick it up and I went to my new set. I don't want to play around. I can add some glue to that later, but I know I have a lot to do, you know, in the future. So I let that go. I don't want that one to frustrate me because I have a lot of work yet to do. So I will start at a new place, a new time, and uh, connect them. And you can see how hard I'm pressing on there to make it work. And you can see that it's a blue light going under my uh, my red pail. <laughs> yeah. I thought, oh, I could watch for that. But, you know, once I got going, I thought, yeah, I don't care. I don't care what color. As long as it lights up, it's great with me. I was happy. So uh, I, th I left the ball out, and I decided to do the, uh, the flip-flops down here. I was going to put a ball down there, the beach ball. And I said, no. Yeah, you can change it up midstream, but I thought it'd stick pretty close. The chair, I'll tell you why now I realize why I didn't put that chair there. I need that big pool to be somewhere. So you have all these big images, you know, larger images, and then you have this pool 
which really is a nice focal point. So I wanted the pool to be the focal point and not that large chair. So I took it out. I just took it out. And uh, whether I do it there when I am um, playing around with the light here. And of course you want your openings to be large enough for that little light to shine through. So once I made up my mind on um, not using it, I took the lights off. Isn't that silly? I kept them on there because I didn't realize, oh no, I'm going to have two major focal point images and I didn't want that. Yeah, I had, look at me, I did it all and then took it up. But that's what you do. When you're designing something, you have to sacrifice some things, take them off for other elements to be the main focal point. So here I'm putting the Chibatronics on my nice umbrella, which will have that uh, vertigo paper on it. And, or you can use the, um, I always say acetate, but it's the vellum. Those are the other two words that get mixed up, right? So here we go, and I'm putting scotch tape. Oh, that was a saver for me. When I did the uh, tonic, remember when I did the jukebox um, canvas, and I used the Chibatronics, I didn't realize you could secure the Chibatronic lights with scotch tape. That would have helped me because I kept having to go back and when you lift them up, lift up from the center line. That's another little thing I will give you a, a reminder. Don't lift it up from the connection part, from the gold, because you risk taking the actual um, copper off of it. So that's something. And I keep pressing. Yeah, I was so excited. Like, woohoo! They're all lighting up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As I'm pressing it, I was getting real excited. And then all of a sudden they wouldn't light up, right? But just keep going. Just keep going. And remember that, oh, there it is. Yes. I had to realize, okay, they are going to light. Be patient. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to add an element. Maybe I'll put the chair down at the bottom. So I worked a little rig up where I had another flip up, but I didn't use it. I didn't use it because of the pool issue. I needed that pool to be my focal image, so I ended up just taking that off the bottom. So don't even look at that. When you're when you're watching this, that's not there. <laughs> the second flip thing isn't there. So now you need to put your double-sided tape around this so that your battery doesn't escape. That's what I'm doing here. And believe it or not, it's three high, yes. This is going to be three high because you don't want a, you don't want that battery to fall out, and b, you want it high enough that the lights, you don't touch those lights. You know, you're not hitting the lights every time somebody that receives this card, you know, is playing with it. You don't risk them hitting them and then they disconnect. So having it three high, it's not that bad. And then on the folded part of your paper, and this is only, um, it's about a hundred pound weight, 80 pounds, that paper that I folded. You don't want a thick one, because if it's thick, it'll keep popping up. Get a thin sheet of paper to fold, uh, to cover that battery, the flat battery. Then cut the sides away from the sticky, okay? So that flap coming down, just cut it. You don't want it hitting that so that it touches the sticky and keeps the lights on. So I just took as much off as I could. You can see that it's nice and thin and uh, I'm seeing to make sure it does not touch the sticky of the double-sided tape. And then I'm going to put three layers high. Oh yeah, this was like, whew, one of those jobs. And you saw that I put some acetate on there. I took it off. I had a thought of, of um, you're going to need, okay, here's the thing. You're going to need to uh, draw your images out because you've got to cut the paper, right? You have to have the holes that look exactly like your images on your cardstock that's going to be seated over top of this. And how I did it was with vellum. I traced the vellum, put the vellum on top of the cardstock that's going to be seated here. You need to make four gussets. All right, so I cut the, I did this an inch. I took the line and I made 
four gusset lines for the fold because your paper is three, um, three double-sided tape high. So when this goes on as a covering, you're going to need a good gusset. You're going to need a good bind on the side. So I put four lines down on my scoreboard and then I left a uh, half an inch to fold over and secure it so you can have a flip card. Now here's my vellum, okay? Seat your vellum on top. I folded down the corner so it would stick like that. Place all your images like they're gonna look on top of your paper, right? This vellum is, has nothing to do with your final uh, card. This is so I can trace the lines. Um, yeah, see that my tape there? I decided it didn't, I had put four high on that and decided to take it off. I didn't need it. I only needed exactly three. There you go. I realized that I had it too high. And um, well, I had it three high. <laughs> I always say that, don't I? So here you go. I touch the light and then um, I'm just taking a little piece off here and doing some cleanup work. So I want that flip-flop to have the blue light and then, well, I would have liked to have two red lights under the flip-flops, but, you know, I didn't do that when I started, so I thought that's okay. Then I folded it, the flip-flops one on top of the other, and i just going around. I forget that chair, okay? Remember, that chair's not there. And then I needed to place down the umbrella. I was forgetting about the pool here. Too many big things on this. There's too many large items if you're going to put the pool down. Keep pressing the pail because that's where the battery is and then seat it. I put, I, I got a tape runner and I put some sticky behind all of these images so they would stay on top of the vellum. Then you're going to trace out that vellum, your images once you're done. And that little girl doesn't mean anything because uh, this is just showing me kind of what my I want to have on there. And for the final thing, yeah, so glad I removed that chair. Then you're going to trace it out, okay? Let, let's put that aside. I don't finish that till the end. Now is the design. I took some Copics. This is the vellum behind the chair. So I made it green with my Copics. I filled in the white of the cut on the chair. I didn't want it bright white. So I just took a light green and I did that and I set it over to the side and then now I'm adding the vertigo plastic paper. That vertigo paper is not even, I don't even consider it paper, it's plastic. And I die cut this scallop piece to go underneath the uh, pool here because this pool is going to be the vertigo paper. Okay, We're go it's going to be an altogether different setting. I'm going to glue down my vellum or if you don't use vellum you can use the vertigo paper whatever. You don't want to see through the cuts you made where the lights are going to shine. Then I clean up my desk. <laughs> yes I clean everything up and organize because I'm getting down to the wire now. I need to design so I need things to be clean around me. I don't mind in the process of coloring and cutting and whatever to have things chaotic. But in the midst of this, when I start designing, I need my mind to look at it and to be a clean setting so I know exactly what I'm going to do on the card front. And see that beautiful vertigo paper, isn't that something? So I found this paper, this pack that I got at Michael's and it had all different uh, alphabet letters and all different styles in this pack. And I liked this because they're small enough to put press here. So I was playing around to see how I could get them to fit and move them. And yeah, just move them over, cut where you have to cut. And I thought they were perfect. I had to cut a little bit off there. These uh, cutting knives are awesome because they have this thing that you flick right there and then it closes it up. So it prevents um, any accidents. So you just take here, I'm putting press here, the vertical papers behind it, and that's where the light's going to shine through. So all the images, like you can see up on my flip blocks, those, that was vertical paper behind there. That's why the acrylic block is on them. 
so that it'll dry and I start getting excited about my creation right about here. When I have all the coloring done, I am putting googly eyes. Oh yes, they have to have googly eyes. These little wee mini, mini, mini googly eyes. I'll put the link to these ones. They're a must in your stash. You always can get the ones beside them. I wanted to show you the difference. There's a small size when you go to look for that. There's a mini micro uh, eyeballs you can buy. So check for that. I'm going to get the link for these ones here, the minis. Um, I actually got those at uh, Joanne's. Yeah, but you can get them online. So I'll try and look for them for you. Put it, the link on my blog. So here we go. Uh, this is the Sunny Studio. I want to go back to these kits at Hedgehog Hollow. They are so crazy affordable for all you get inside the package and if you order from certain companies you get discounts in the kit too that you can use I mean uh, Alexandra thought of everything in these kits they're even right down to candy to munch on while you're creating you know I, that's all I need right is more is sugar <laughs> I drink coca-cola so I get enough sugar right so back to my stash I needed grass, obviously I have a pool, and I wanted to have some grass. So I took my Altenu little uh, die cutter here, it was my mini, so quick, so quick, I love it. And I made about uh, six of them, I think, just cut out the paper on my thick card stock. And you can see that I set uh, everything I wanted to stick, I ran through my uh, Xyron. I either ran it through my little one if it was narrow, the five inch one, or I got my big daddy out, which is the nine inch. I think it's nine inches across. And I did my big sheets of paper, which is awesome because if you put the, the full sheets of six by six paper through your Xyron, and then you can die cut your sentiments out of it and have it sticky on the back. It works out beautifully, just beautifully. And are you tired yet? <laughs> We're 57 minutes in, and I keep editing it down where I can. So I've got it down to an uh, hour and 50 minutes now. Yeah. So I went to my stash again. Now here's what I did. Let's stop everything here, okay? Um, uh, yeah, put that away, Carol. I cut out, I put the acetate over top of the sheet that goes on top of the, uh, of the wiring there. That's right above it. Okay, I put that piece of vellum, because you're going to wonder how I got the exact spots. I put the vellum, and then where I traced out the vellum, I went and took my um, cutting knife, and I went around it so that the it would poke through the vellum, and it would give me markings on my paper, and that way I knew exactly where I needed to cut the holes. And the vellum was just like having um, a copy to put over top so that the holes that I cut in my 140 pound cardstock were perfect. Now here you can see why the chair can't go there. It just can't. To the, it's just too much, it made it lopsided. So I thought, okay, maybe I can sneak it in if I put some houses. So I grabbed my Penny Black set and it had these adorable, fun houses. They're so cute. When you see me colored them with the Copics, so much fun. Now I'm gonna die cut uh, the zigzag it that's going to be behind my pool to look like waves on this pool okay you can see the other pool on the upper right there that's going to be the uh, that's going to be the um, smushy pool you know the the one where you blow up the kids pool that's on the upper right but this one's going to be flat but I didn't want it to look flat so Sunny Studios has those uh, uh, border dies and I loved the ziggity ones because it looks like waves. So I die cut about six or eight of them. There's the pack. You get three different, three or four, maybe even four borders, different borders. It's fabulous. And you'll see where I use them throughout this card. And don't throw away on the right hand where you cut them out because that will be, uh, you can use that as um, a mat, like a mask. Actually, it's stencil. <laughs> I get those mixed up too. You can use it as a stencil for the water. So I always put that in my Ziploc bag of 
my uh, collections there. Now I got out the Mini Misty, the little one, because I need to use the black hybrid ink by LDRS Creative, the hybrid inks, because they're Copic friendly. And I am going to not only stamp it with the black ink, I'm also going to put clear embossing powder over it because it gives it that nice ridge when you're coloring, and I like that. And like always, keeping it clean, then you've got to heat set it, and then you get the joy. Aren't the, you get the joy of coloring, but <laughs> I'm getting excited as I'm looking at these. Aren't these the cutest little houses? They're, they just remind me like of a, either a, like a gingerbread walkway where everything is so cute, like candy, like cotton candy, something or other. It's just so much fun for a child's card, I think, to have this type, this style of houses, kind of like uh, char characters, character, caricatures. Phew, you don't want to say that 10 times. Yeah. So here I just picked whatever colors I thought would work, you know, it, as long as it was bright. You can see I had to go back with the bright, bright purple because I wanted these to really stand out. I was thinking of the, the, I think uh, we all had that game. It was called um, Candyland. Candyland. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it was so much fun. And this is, it reminded me of that game when I was doing this. It's funny how our mind just goes back to, you know, days of old. <laughs> Being 64, I am, I am rather old. So I can go back in time and be thankful that I can remember some things in my uh, past. <laughs> ah, yeah. Whew. I've already talked for probably a couple hours, even though it's just an hour here. I keep stopping and restarting and stopping and flubbering with my words so I have to start over and getting distracted and having to stop. That's the edit. That's the voiceover part. You know, the edit... I used to like really, I really did like editing, you know, until my videos got up to be 60 hours long. <laughs> and then <laughs> editing wasn't so much fun then, right? Because you're having to edit it down, you know, 30 hours down to an hour. So you're cutting out, uh, you know, 29, 30, whatever hours of work. And you have to all put it all together so it's smooth and it runs proportionally properly proportionally properly. I should cut there, right, and go back and fix it, but I'm not. Because I'm coloring here, and you're just watching me color and fussy cut, color, fussy cut, and I like to cut it out right away so that my hand doesn't get in it. You know, I'll be, I'll be coloring another image, and then my elbow has totally ruined the image I just colored or something like that. So I take the risk out of there and cut it off. Yeah, and isn't it fun? It's just but you don't have to have any special coloring talent to color. Yes, I'm speaking from experience here. If you enjoy coloring, it's all going to come out wonderfully. It is, you know. Uh, you don't have to know where the sun's shining through or if it's coming from the left or the right. Just do, just use your eyeballs, look at the image, and if it's pleasing to your sight, call it finished. Don't worry about having everything in it. That takes the fun out of it when you have to always concentrate on those little um, things. Now, if you're doing a portrait or something, of course, you know, uh, you want to be constantly reminded where the sun is coming in, where your shadows are. But when you're doing cards and you're having fun, do exactly that. Have fun. Color. Don't get stressed out about the little things because there'll be other things in your card creation that will frustrate you. So save it for the bigger things, right? <laughs> That's my thinking anyway. So my Copics are right in front of me. I bought these um, beautiful containers for my Copics actually at a thrift store. And they're mitered too. Somebody did a really good job with uh, these and they're slanted down so that the Copics stay in it. And I put them right in front of me. I pull, push them up so that my arm, if you see it always going forward, that's where my Copics are. I just grab them. I look at the colors and say, yep, that'll go. Yeah. And you know what really looks nice? Let me jump in here. Purple and yellow. Oh, I love it. 
And I love this color of red, this, this uh, rose petal red. See how I went on top of the door? So because I went over the door, I thought, okay, I'm going to have a bright red door now. Yeah, that's how I resolve things. I cover it up with another color. No stress. We want to eliminate stress, right? As much as possible. And uh, save it for later. That's what I always say. And then if later doesn't, you don't have any things later, that's a bonus day. And uh, carry on. Yes. So here's my pen. Once everything, it's probably wet. I probably didn't wait for it to dry because I am impatient at times. I want to carry on. I love that design. Isn't that kind of nice where you put the line, the dot, the line, the dot? I liked it. Now I have to color in my weights. So I grabbed my applicators and I'm just going to put them down. I, I, I'm pretty sure, sometimes I swipe some tape on there to hold it if I don't want to hold it with my hand. I guess here I didn't. And I use Distress Oxides because they just color like butter. I mean, they're crazy. And I love the color of the blues with that um, teal. Oh, I just love it. Turquoise or whatever it's called there. I don't have... I think it's Salty Ocean is one of the blues. Whatever you like, you know. And then I have to do the underneath portion to match, right? So I just grab the green, whatever this one is. Um, I can, If I remember, I'll put all the colors I used on there. And when you're applying this, put your greens on top of the blue on your zickities here. Uh, and that's the Sunny Studio Border Dye. Diza, plural, that you get in the kit. And I just kept going across, making sure that they, you know, one side was a different color than the other. And this is the pool waves. I just think it's cute. You just have to cut, take a, you know, if you have a punch or you have a die. Um, this one I had already in my stash, so I didn't have to cut it out. And now I'm going to use up as much of what I cut out as possible. I'll go over the edges like I'm doing here with my applicator so that it's not white. You can, you know, see some color. And then I'm going to move on to my grass. Now this is crazy colors. I know this mustard seed, I think. And I toned down the grass. Everything else was so bright in this uh, card creation. I wanted to make this muted almost like a mixed media uh, style piece because I didn't want the grass to overtake all the objects. So in order to do that, I just toned it down like with more muted colors, not the bright colors. Here I'm going paper to write direct, ink to paper. And then use both, of, both sides of your die. You've got the long grass and you've got the really narrow grass blades. So I did both of them, both sides. Right, you want to do the front and the back just in case it flips over. Yes, I was a mess. I was. But I take out my Vim. You know my fabulous Canadian Vim that I get at Costco? Uh, so, and, and you can get it at my dollar store too. You know my dollar store where nothing's a dollar? You can get it there as well. It's called Vim, V-I-M, and it takes everything off. Let me tell you, it'll clean up your surfaces, your fridge, your stove, your hands. Sorry, I just hit my mic there. So now I get out my trees. I had this tree dye, and I did the same thing, muted colors. I wanted it not to pop. I want it to be there, but not be there, if you know what I mean. So I'm just adding some tree colors to it, and I ripped one of them while I was, uh, you know, I was a little bit heavy-handed, but I still use that top part. Yes, I used it all. You don't want to um, lose anything because you might need some place to hide something and then you can use that piece. So I did another cleanup. Oh yes, you want to do the backs. Whatever color, it doesn't matter, just as long as it's not white. You know me in white. I don't want white hardly showing anywhere. If it has to show, that's fine. But if not, I like to co cover it up. And you know what else? Here I'm just taking some Nuvo liquid glue to put my... Um, wonderful uh, pool together, the vertigo paper. The vertigo with these jiggity, you know, the zigzag border dye just oh, went together perfect. The oxide colors. Now we're going back to our design on top of the cardstock. 
this is where I knew the chair was a goner. I'm looking at it going, oh, I mean, talk about covering white cardstock. That's too much. So in comes the colors. This is where everything goes Candyland. It is bright. Yeah, it was hard for me to get rid of that chair. You can tell, you know, what if somebody needs a rest there? I mean, yeah, too much. Then I thought, oh, what about my girl? And she's on one of those uh, boing boing things. So um, you have to remember that she's, you know, dimensional. And so is the little girl in the pool dimensional. And uh, yeah, so here I'm deciding, okay, what papers am I going to use? Of course, I'm going to use bright yellow because of the houses. Look at it's coming together. I'm getting so excited. I got off my chair and stood up. Whew. I thought, yahoo. And then I thought, no, I have to cut it up. So I'm going to do two thirds yellow. I'm going to stick with the, um, the ratio of thirds, you know, and, and then I'm going to do one third a different color on the bottom. But I have to get my pool ready. So you've got that beautiful underlying cherry with the UD embossing powder, you know, ultra thick embossing, embossing powder. And it's shining like crazy through that bag. And then you have the hair gel. I used clear hair gel. I remember my mom got it for me uh, about five years ago. And she, they were like a dollar. They were on sale for a dollar. So she grabbed me a bunch of them. I've never used, I always use it for that, these projects. I mean, who uses hair gel? I don't. You know, but anyway, my husband doesn't either, so I couldn't give it to nobody wanted it. So I thought, crafts, of course, I'll put it in my craft room. Everything that doesn't go with anything else goes in my craft room. Now we need to make it, get some scotch tape and tape it together so that your grass is uneven. You want it all different. You want the color shading. You don't, don't even worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just put it on there and be happy. Yes, that's going to be our motto today. Be happy. Just be happy, you know, with what you're creating. And I had the pink flip-flops, so I had to incorporate some pink somewhere. And, um, yeah, I was really excited. Look how I just flipped it over there, right? I wasn't really too concerned about my room right now. <laughs> Being organized, right? And all you have to do when you have pattern paper like this is line it up. You're going to lose some on the top and some on the bottom, but... I wanted all of my lines to be lined up. It wasn't there. I'm looking at, there you go, Carol, lined up perfectly. Then take your cutting knife and cut out the, the gut pieces so your lights can shine through. And that's awesome. And you already have your vertigo uh, paper behind your objects. So that's great. And now the pink. Oh, this card screamed happy. This card not even for a happy birthday. It just, you know, if you were having a bad day and you picked up this card and just look at it, it would bring a smile to your face. If nothing else, you would get a great big smile. Everything, and you know I'm not, a, my cards are generally not, uh, it's more vintage and muted. But lately, since I have been designing and uh, with these kits, I've been making happy colored cards, if you've noticed, like the one with the ice cream and the awning. That was bright and cheery. Um, just, uh, I don't know, small images like this, like little girls and animals and all that. It lends itself. There I go again, it lends itself. It makes you want to create bright colors to me. So there you have it, and let me measure my card for you as I'm sitting here. It is eight inches by eight inches long by six and three quarter inches uh, tall. So that's the measurements. And then I cut out the holes there and back to the uh, creating of it. Oh, I tell you what, this is my happy time when I get to put it all together. You have to match the holes with the holes you made in the objects, right? Because <laughs> your lights are gonna shine through. And uh, you can either use hot glue uh, for the back. Uh, that's what I did here. You can see I used, uh, I'm pretty sure I used hot glue. I cut my tree in half. 
I made it nice and thick so it had lots of branches, but I cut it in half. I left the trunk whole, but the branches came off, just so I could cover up that little spot with some tree limbs. I don't know why. It was muted colors, and I thought, you know what? Once you've gone this far and you have all this color and the lights are going to light up, what's, what's a tree right on the side? There you go. And I just put that twig, I did, I covered up the chimney, but I cut out a couple of limbs so you could see the chimney. So it was all always good. There you go, you can see that. And even though I sped it up, I really did take my time uh, with this these cards. It, it's like, I love the little details. I love these bright colors. Then I slid the grass. Oh yeah, see all those little dots? I wanted to have like dew on the grass and I'll leave a link for that. It's Faber or Faber, but I call it Faber Castell Texture Gems. It's a tube and you squirt it out and it makes these beautiful little dew drops uh, by Faber Castell. I'll leave the link for that. It was right in my hand. I just took it out. I use it all the time. It's nice to have a few of them on flowers to look like the dew, you know, dew and rainbows. Oh yeah, it's really nice. And that dye up there that I use the papers that come in the kit for all the color and that's made by Little Inker. I'll leave the link to that. I'll try to leave the link for everything I used except for the if I, I wonder if I could find that foam set that I got at the thrift store. I'll, I'll do my best for you and try and um, find that. So now I'm cutting it off. I scotch taped all the grass together at the bottom so that it had some stability. Tucked it in. But then I'm going to have to cut off some grass because you want to see the flip-flops, right? So I just cut the areas. I put it in here. I put uh, liquid glue. No, hot glue. Excuse me. You can see my glue gun there. And um, yeah, I just played with it and had some fun, cut where I had to cut. And be reminded when you cut to grab your ink applicator and ink the white spots. You don't want it to look white, you know. You want it to look all white, but not white. How's that? And then you can add some, chop up some little pieces and add it. That's what I did. And you, I keep a little pile there in case I need some extra grass. You know, just even some little features. I tuck it underneath, and now it's coming together. It's just coming together for me. I'm really happy. And I thought to myself, do I want three or two houses? I was going to put a house on the other card, because remember I told you I was going to have my other card. When you see it here, that other card was going to be the top of this. Then you're going to oh, flip it open and see this. But I separated them because they were too bright. They each had their own character. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to get three cards out of this. Or two cards, excuse me. So now I'm running my zigzag border dies and look where I'm putting them. Tucking it underneath there. The white, it's the first time I loved white. Running the white border added something. It added the appeal to this card. Taking off the chair and adding a girl there was perfect. It had enough movement going on. And then when I, I put the lights out and pressed the press here on the pail and all my lights worked. I mean, that's the bonus to your work. When everything works out well at the end, oh, it just is wonderful. So I'm going to add this rainbow on here. And the rainbow I left, I didn't do it like higher. I didn't add, I just left it flat like this. And I put it behind the houses. I ran it through my Xyron. And uh, that way I could just quickly glue it down. Then I added an extra piece from another piece I die cut behind the, the left, port, the two houses on the left. I added a little rainbow in there. And then I want to raise the third house up so they're not all flat there. I want one of them to have dimension. And oh, I love this card. I have to tell you, I really did. And uh, we're getting down to the wire. Yes. I was saying uh, to, to my friend, I said, you know what? People are going to have to take a day off work to watch this one. <laughs> Excuse me, I can't come in today. I'm watching one of Carol Held's uh, tutorials. <laughs> yeah, that's how long. Oh, yeah. 
And then I was thinking, okay, do I want another tree? Here's where I start, you know, tucking and adding and some, uh, I thought of even the little ball there, but I took that out. And in the image with these little girls, there was little um, water droplets. Okay, here, oh yes, look at the border dies. Isn't this sweet? It covers up, I mean, you have to ground your images. My houses needed, uh, they didn't need grass, that's for sure, but they did need to be grounded. So I thought the zigzag border die was perfect. And then I added some uh, Winkistella to it. And um, yeah, it was that other one. It wasn't the Winkistella, but it was the other glitter pen. Um, I'll put that in my links. I don't have it in front of me to read it off, but it's not the Winkistella, but one just like it. I added that to the white, just so it had a little bit of glitter, but you, it still looked all white. <laughs> you knew I was going to say that, right? Now we're going to continue on with the design. I'm going to look at it and I end up putting that little girl down at the bottom with my hot glue because that just assures you of having, you know, it not fall off. And if your hot glue gun is plugged in, it's perfect, isn't it? And then I'll tuck some of the grass behind her and there you have it. You've got the boing boing feature on the kids. You've got the press here where all of your stuff is lighting up. Uh, when I think of it here, if I hadn't thought about the houses earlier, I would have lit up the windows, you know, also. But those were an added feature to the card of having the little houses, so I didn't think of it. But, you know, next time, oh, there's the pen, the glitter pen that I used to add some glitter. And, uh, yeah, because we had glitter on that bucket. And then we put all of that beautiful Nouveau Crystal glaze on so much of the objects and I actually um, I ended up putting the white dots there's these uh, spaces that come off on the little linker die here that uh, leaves a hole a gap and I thought adding the white dots would um, come you know it all come together with having the zigzag and the white dots it's those little details that I think just add to your card. Just thinking of doing uh, above and beyond your creation adds a whole lot of fun. Just look at it and say, you know, what little extra thing can I add? And I got out my tiny little pearls, believe it or not, and I put pearls going across on the little flowers of the house, and then I covered them. Oh yeah, I'm pressing it down. This is where my I have so much fun. Look, light it up. Wouldn't it look nice behind the houses? I really think it would. Um, but I, I couldn't put it on the pool here because you've got the vertigo paper. You have the cardstock behind you. I think it didn't need it. It didn't need it. I think it just having the lights come in, the buckets, you know, behind the bucket, the umbrella, the beach ball, the flip-flops, that's all you needed. Look at I keep pressing it. Then I turn out the lights, you know. I'll turn down a couple of my lights. There you go. Press it again. Oh yeah, isn't that awesome? It works. <laughs> oh yeah, joy, joy, yes. Uh, reminds me of that little song in Sunday school there. I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And then people scream, where? And you go, down in my heart, where? Down in my heart, yeah. I'm showing you the UD, um embossing powder, how thick it is. I mean, if you just did this, if you just did this on your card, it would be fantastic. You didn't have to add the hair gel uh, addition to it. I think that looks nice. The hair gel gave me dimension and another feature to do something a little extra. But uh, And the UD, uh, the Ultra Thick Embossing Powder, it was great because it shone up through the plastic bag and the colored, you know, the ink refill inside the hair gel. So it all came together. So now I'm picking out papers for the card, like other papers. Here's where I started. I took out my nine inch Zyron and I just started putting through all of whatever I could find that I needed to have sticky on the back. And I ran it through while it was still there. So all of the grass, you can see what I'm doing here. And uh, when you're using your Zion, Zyron, just remember that whatever's facing up isn't sticky. 
and whatever's on the underneath is what gets sticky and that'll keep you from making any mistakes and wasting you know your uh, sticky portion mm -hmm. so here I want to take the guts out of my rainbow before I stick it through I wanted to add a few more I didn't even end up using these two I can see them over there um, waiting to get put in a in a bag or in my Ziploc bags you know where I store everything so here's where I have those little splish splash on the stamps there's these little um, like watermarks I love them and I put them all around with my hybrid LDRS creative ink my little mini and whatever you know I hid on the dimension like with the zigzag uh, borders I just added it with my Copic friendly pen there added the rest of it and it came out wonderful and then I put my um, the, gl uh, the glitter pen I added some glitter to all of these little splashes and I thought yep put some out on the grass Carol and I put it on the pink just some water splashes all over with the glitter on it added another cute feature and here's my mini 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 pearls so I put them on the flowers on the house and then I put them going up you have to bling out your flip-flops right so I put the them going up the center of my flip-flops and then I grabbed I did five of them I can remember put five there Carol and then I colored them bright bright fluorescent that bright pink um, with my Copics and I'm pretty sure the bright pink that I used for that is my I'm just seeing it here if you're looking for a bright pink it's right here and it's kind of fluorescent -y. I'll grab it while you're I'm doing or I'm taking any glue off there but it is the RB25 I like that color and uh, yeah so I finish adding the pearls there and we're pretty well completed on here. Oh, I got out some of my jelly dots, those dot dot things. And why not, right? Why not add some more color? So I added the yellow, flat yellow to the center of the umbrella. And uh, the beach ball, I added something there. And I just really had fun. I hope you had fun watching. Um, all the elements there and whatever you want to pop up even on your dots there add your Copic uh, markers to it and change up the color to match whatever creation you've created and I put uh, there was a line right there with the grass and that little uh, water water mark so I just you know just add a few of these I don't think it matters you know I really don't I think it that it's so wild that's what I mean it matters but that it's so wild I love it I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to get everything together um, with the pool I wanted to make sure right here I was looking at it that I had just enough it wasn't too blue that my uh, it was indigo blue that I used with the refill for the uh, Stampin Up refill and now I'm going to create my other card this is the other one. We finished the one card and then I'll show you what I do on the inside of the one we just created. I think you'll like that technique as well. And here I thought, of course, you have to go with purple on the top and I'm matching the lines because it does have a pattern. And remember we ran this through a Xyron, so so quick and easy to just tear them off your sheets. They're already glued down. You don't have to worry. Cut them off. And then I added the polka dot. Oh, the two of these together, you know, you've got the lines with the polka dots. I think it was, yeah, it was made for a happy card, I think. And uh, cut that off. And this was some fun creating with this kit, okay? It really was. I just set all of the, uh, the kit, everything that was in the kit for July and I set it down and then I created around it. I didn't create and then add them. I created around my kit object. Oh, excuse me, don't flick my gel. Oh, he has a way, doesn't he? <laughs> so here we go. Um, they're just a fixture. 
in my videos. I can't help it. I just think they're so cute. And uh, so now I'm putting some vellum underneath the uh, round portion of my card there that we made just so I have some um, place to tape, right? I have to have some place to tape this down. Be very careful when you're putting the tape down, you don't cut into your baggie, okay? Um, I did it. Yes, I'm going to admit, I cut a little bit and out was, my uh, hair gel was oozing out, but it was at this, uh, oh, thank you, Carol. <laughs> Stick your head in there. Yes, I was going to edit that out, but you know, those are the things that happen. So just keep going. I'm just going to keep going, showing you how I did this. You want to keep mushing that hair gel so you know just how much you're going to need around the edges. And then just start taping. And I was cutting a piece of the tape off and a little nick went in there. But like I said, it was at the right spot and I just added some tape over it. And I secured it like with a lot of tape so it would not ooze when you get the card. And thus, the reason why I did a vellum beveled card so that nobody could touch the elements. And here I'm squishing the vertical paper down because this is going, the vertical paper is going to be on top. So, um, yeah, you're going to press it down. See, see, see on my paper there, the gel? Yeah, that's where I knew I had a boo-boo and I had to go back and fix it. But I did, and you can see I'm pressing on it like crazy and nothing's coming out. And bonus, I had too much gel in there, so cutting it was perfect. I just squirted what I didn't want inside there and carried on. <laughs> so it was a blessing in disguise. Now I wanted to have a rainbow going around the top, not like that, look at how crooked that is. So I got out my Tim Holtz ruler that has the center zero mark so I could mark it and put it on their property. So somewhere, I don't know if I left it in the edit, but that's what I did. I love having that uh, center. Yeah, I measured it out first to see where the center was going to be, took it out. I wasn't that far off. And then um, I got out my Tim Holtz ruler to just uh, measure it and it measured out well, so I didn't worry about it. I just moved on here. Now, of course, we have to have more grass because there, you know, where the pool is, there's going to be grass. I know there's grass out by our pool, so I thought, yeah, I'm going to add poo uh, grass, pool grass. <laughs> and I love those, the gems, the Faber-Castell texture gem. I love the way you just squeeze it. It's, it looks like an oversized pen, and you just squeeze it out, and it makes those beautiful dots that I added on the grass. And I like that we added the mustard color of the oxidings to our grass. And it's nice to have it toned down too, isn't it? You know, like everything just isn't really bright. Um, and it kind of looked like, you know, the sun was kind of coming off through the beautiful rainbow, down onto the grass. These are the things you have to think of when you're making a card. You're in your own world. Uh, when I don't know about it. Yeah, and I wanted grass to be coming up on the outside because... We don't all cut our grass perfectly, you know, the, it's not always trimmed. It's like your hair, you don't always have it exactly the way it should be. So I thought I'm putting grass up there on top of the pool. I mean, yes, if you put a kid's pool down on the grass, grass blades uh, are going to be on it because they're going to be going in and out of the pool. They're going to add it whether you add it or not. And... <laughs> Yeah, stick with the video, Carol, right? Stick with the video. Now I wanted to add white. Can you believe it? I really did want to add the white on top. But then I have the stripe underneath. Like when I die cut the rainbow out, I had the stripes. Oh, yes, here comes the chair. Whew. Yeah, now isn't this perfect to have the chair on this portion, on this card instead of the other card? You needed something there. So what I was saying is I put the striped paper uh, rainbow. Yeah, it doesn't. she doesn't go up there. I don't end up putting it there. And then I put the white, and then I got the polka dot paper, the larger polka dots. And believe it or not, when you die cut, you see that element. You do see it, even though it's thin. It matches the small polka dots on the bottom portion. And on this card, on this one, 
I changed it up so two-thirds was on the bottom portion and a third on the top, where it was vice versa on the other card. Those are the things I kind of think of. And here I'm doing the big polka dots on this paper, running it through twice, and I'm going to put it on top of the white. Because even though that did look fine, I could have left it like that. I really did like the look. I just thought adding the polka dots would matchy-matchy. So I just run this through. I get the rainbow to put on the top to match the bottom. And I am getting super excited for creating the acetate bevel over top of this. I like the idea of having a bevel so that when you give this to somebody, they're not always squishing the baggie. And, if, you know, I always fear that it gets ripped and then your whole card is like yuck. And we don't want yuck, right? So I thought, I'm going to put, I'm going to make another beveled card. I love the look. You can tell I am really struggling to get more of that glaze out. I took a paintbrush and I put the glaze down in. This would assure me that all three uh, stacked, three high, all of the uh, die cuts would dry and stick together. So I wanted to say rainbow kind of day. So I just, I stamped it in the purple color and then I thought, no, I don't like the purple on purple. So I did it in the lime green, loved it. Now I'm going to go, I die cut the rainbow die that comes in your kit and I went over it, believe it or not, I did the Copic and then quickly put some uh, embossing powder over top. Whatever stuck, stuck. Whatever didn't, didn't. I just got the look of uh, kind of like rain. It had some wet portions on there on the rainbow um, sentiment, the dye. And I went right over the top with my finger and some Tombow glue. And then I added this three high. So I, uh, I just kept the, the guts inside. It made it easier for me. And then don't forget your little uh, dot and tittle there. You get that tittle right on top of your eye. And this Nouveau dries, dries clear. So I get as much as I can get out with the baby wipe here. And then I'll take my pokey tool and get the rest. And then I'll put my little... Um, dot on there three high I did the same thing if you're going to have your um, that's why you have to always remember that they're there because they're so tiny and then I added the white then another white and then my colored purple on top and it all matched yes just added a teensy bit of glue and there you have it I just love that pool I love love the wet look of that plastic pool I think it just really adds to it and then I grabbed my ruler and made sure that it was even um, going across best I could. I mean, I'm not going to go crazy. And then I put kind of a day, so it's rainbow kind of a day. I took out my cutter, made sure it was as straight as can be. Uh, for some reason, you know, when you're doing cards and you're looking and looking and looking, it's hard to get something straight just eyeballing it, even if it's this small. So here we go. I cut a piece of acetate so that it had an inch on each side. And then I cut it, I put a, um, two lines in there so that I had a gusset going across, underneath. You, you wanna make sure you do that gusset and then test it out. How high do you want that bevel? Then grab a hold of it, mark it with a little pen and then put it down with a little gusset also. So I'm cutting it out. I know how much I need to have out of there. I cut it too short last time, so I had to go back and cut it again, but that's okay. Now for the inside. I wanted that when you opened up the other card. Now, remember we did the five uh, lines on there to fold over. This is going on the other card. This is going to be the inside. And I thought, oh, let's do a basket weave. So I took my uh, tape runner, I made a line on the top just to hold these. I cut the paper so I had three stripes going across and then I cut the heart yellow. I thought this just matched. And I didn't have to, uh, I, I just used six by six sheets and, and used up what I could and it just matched. And then when you fold that over to put it onto your card, 
you're not going to see that wide gap on the inside. So I'll hold it down here. The only mistake I made when I did this, I didn't realize that the, see the fold on the right hand side there you're looking at, like you know that's going to fold over the card. I should have turned it around because guess what? My hearts are upside down when I go to put it on. And I already, I realized it too late, but you know, I don't think somebody is really going to uh, worry about that when they see it. Of course I saw it. And yeah, I, maybe I will redo it. I don't know. But for now, it's not bothering me. I, I just really didn't mind. I noticed it. <laughs> of course I did. When I turned it around, I thought, oh no, my hearts are upside down. But you know, that adds to the ambiance of it all. So I was fine. Just go over all of whatever sticking up on the um, edges, right? You don't have to do the uh, inside of your basket weave. But I thought this was nice. You can put a circle in the middle. You could put a pool in, with another sentiment in there, like a happy birthday or whatever. Uh, one of the rainbow sentiments, they're beautiful. And while that was drying for the inside, see how I put the, the uh, fold now is over to the left. And you can see that my hearts are upside down, but that's okay. Yeah. You're saying, why do you keep mentioning Carol? Because I keep looking at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my eye is drawn there for some reason. Eeks. Yeah. But anyway, so I grabbed some more. Uh, I thought hearts and circles would be nice. Remember, I had to add that piece to the right and the line was there. So I'm just covering the line. I don't know why. You don't need to. But it just adds extra color. I like the hearts. I love the rainbow. I love the rainbow dye, rainbow kind of day, the pool, the chair, the cute little boing boing girls on there with this July kit. Now I'm going, there's my bevel. It's just perfect. You don't want it to touch your girl in the pool. You have to have it just a little bit above it so that she can boing boing when the card moves. I put some double sided tape. Uh, you have that one little uh, fold, that gusset, right? You made two lines on your scoreboard, so you had a gusset when you're folding. That way it's not tight to your card. And then I'm going to adhere it. Uh, if I had a thought, I would have put this uh, size on the other side, but I didn't. And then you take it off there, grab your pokey tool and take it off and add it to there. And then I you want to add on the back it is a uh, Biggs die the Tim Holtz Biggs die and it and it cuts out uh, that folded uh, oh, what do they call it it's for the back of your card so it doesn't tip over let's go with that and then I just have to make sure my finger slides in there you can take a ruler and push it down and there you have it really do love the look of the bevel. You wouldn't have to put the big sty on the back here uh, like I did, but it does add to it because it, you can flatten it out or you can push out the center. I do want to make sure I add another sheet of paper to cover this. So I ran it through my Xyron and had it nice and sticky. And, no, actually, I put the six inch double sided tape on it. Look, at I had to go back and light it up. Now here's what I was saying. I was going to have this flip and then that one on top. Now isn't that crazy? You can't do that. That was just like, are you kidding, Carol? It has to be separate cards. So uh, I took my six inch tape and I put it on the back here, or five inch, maybe this is five inch. I'm just cutting it out. You want it to be super sticky because it's going to adhere your acetate that you put down. Even though you have double-sided tape on it, I always like to go the extra mile. Why not stick it down to <laughs> your paper on your desk? You know why I have all that paper on there, don't you? So that the glare of my lights. I think about it at the last minute while my video is complete, right? Yeah, can you believe we did it? There's only like five more minutes left. Oh, thank you for sticking with me. You probably had to do it in 10 seating, sittings, seatings, 10 sittings. But I appreciate it. I sure do. And I appreciate the July kit with Sunny Studio products. They're just so cute. And you know, you can use borders for anything. The border dies in the Sunny Studio set, they're wonderful. I love them. 
And now I know I have to cover the front, so I'm taking a little bit off. I don't want too much uh, white coming across because you can see the girl there. I don't want to cover her up. And uh, I end up gluing it with the hot glue on the border here. So I'll just grab the hot glue was sitting there. I need to take a little bit more off. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to secure it. But then I'm going to take one of the stripe pieces. It's yellow and white, just a single stripe. And I'm going to cover up the white with the yellow. Um, yeah, don't, I've learned not to instantly put my finger across there and burn it. So I just grabbed an acrylic block. I'll take any of the goobers out that I see and uh, clean it all up here. And then in my stash, I had these white and yellow daisies, these acrylic kind of uh, porcelain, excuse me, daisies. And I thought that would just add to it. So there's the big sty, the Sizzix big sty that makes this, uh, um, oh, I can't think of what you call that. I'll leave it in my on my blog, though, for you. And you just run the big sty through your cutting machine and you come out with one of these. It's fantastic. And I have it clipped in, and then you can unclip it so it's flat. You just add your double-sided tape to the right-hand side there, flip it over, and you have yourself, um, yeah, let's call it a stable, a, sta a card stabilizer. <laughs> I know you can tell me what it is in the comments, but it is a Tim Holtz Big die, And uh, I don't use them, and I have so many of them. I'm going to have to get them out because there's so many wonderful uh, die cuts with those. Then I'm going to get my ruler, my centering ruler to get this down. Yeah, I decided to use the center ruler there and work it so that it's even. And we are at the end. Can you believe it? We are at the end of this tutorial. I'm going to put that down. I'm really happy with using this, even though the card would stand with the bevel. It just looks nice. I think it just looks nice. So um, yeah, there you have it. Card number one and card number two. And even though my hearts are upside down, I do like it. It's fine. It matches the front. And there's my uh, porcelain uh, daisies. I mean, you can't help but love a daisy, right? And uh, yeah, and now I'm going to stamp with my stamp, especially created especially for you by Carol Held. I'll add some embossing clear embossing powder on there. Woo, I'm going. I'm so excited that I'm getting down to the wire uh, of creating this for you. Uh, heat set it, and then we're going to go over the products I used in the July kit. Thank you, Alexandra, for all the extras that you add to these kits. Thank you for subscribing, for your comments. Um, and at the end of the video where I put my other videos, when you see my head there, if you just press that, you'll be able to subscribe right there. That's why my head is there. It's to subscribe. There's the 6x6, what's left of the beautiful double-sided paper that's in this kit, the July kit. You can turn it over. There's all the Sunny Studio dies, stamps, sentiments. Love it. This is everything I used. Thank you very much. You know I do appreciate you. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch my July kit projects out of the Hedgehog Hollow July kit. So that's it, my friends, and I am just going to say thank you. Have a blessed week, and that's all, folks. Thank you. Have a blessed week.